everybody and welcome back to the stream. It's Friday and you know what that means. It's time for functional home fitness, the class where we do weight training with stuff that you can find around the house, such as books, big pile of books back there, such as, ow, fuck, laundry. Um, clearly the heaviest thing in my particular arsenal. Uh, and such as backpacks that can be filled with, say, more books. Um, oh, hi, hi. It's good to see everybody. How y'all doing? We've, we've made it to the end of the work week again. It actually is like cloudy and rained a tiny bit, like actual clouds, not smoke haze. I've been able to see the mountains for two days in a row. It's crazy. Um, <laughs> which is really sad to say, but hopefully, I, I don't even know what the, uh, what the uh, current status is on the fires in Colorado, let alone California, but you know, fingers crossed that things can get brought under control sometime soon. And that maybe going forward, just maybe, we uh, actually implement better policies of controlled fires. Um, in the way that, you know, First Peoples, Native Americans uh, did for centuries before white folks came along and were like, oh, I mean, that's just terrible. Why would we do that? Well, this is why we do that, folks, so that we don't have insane wildfires every year that aren't under control. <laughs> anyway, um, today was actually clear skied, got a little rain, both good things, so fingers crossed. And I'm, I'm feeling really tired right now. Uh, it actually took me longer than usual to get myself prepped for class, which, you know, is, is unusual. But hey, you know, we're not always gonna be on 100% every time that we're doing something. And that includes me, you know? I'm not always going to be 100% on uh, when I'm here on the stream with y'all, but I'm still gonna give it my all and I know you know that and I'm gonna try and be honest with you about where I am because I think that's important. You know, it's important that we have uh, clear examples of people acknowledging when they're not feeling at the top of their game, you know, so that we don't spend so much time really getting down on ourselves uh, and, and comparing ourselves negatively to people who seem like they have it all together all the damn time um, because it's not true. Nobody has it together all the time. And, you know, I try to, I want to always be honest with you guys about the, about, with you folks about, about the times when I don't have it all together. However, yesterday was super fun. For anybody who hung out with me on Instagram stories, um, when I just sort of gave you a peek through my rest day as it was yesterday. Um, that was so fun. I haven't been on Instagram in a while because it's the platform that I don't, like, don't quite know how to use for this yet. And I feel like um, those kinds of smaller, you know, vlogging type things uh, is gonna be exactly what I wanna use it for. So that was super fun. Um, anybody who took in that content, I hope you enjoyed it. Lots of, lots of knitting, lots of watching YouTube. The cookies came out deliciously, oh man. And I had a great time just sort of taking you all through my day. So that we'll definitely do more of. Um, so that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. And it was, you know, a good reminder to me that my life is full. My life has much in it. You know, sometimes it can feel like you're just sort of being lazy. Um, and a lot of times that's just your brain getting down on you. Um, and if you do something like that where you're like, no, I'm going to take people through everything I'm doing, you can go... Oh, I'm actually doing a fair amount. Cool. Anyway, 
We're here to do some strength training with objects that you can find around the house. So here is my pre-class caveat for functional home fitness. Um, we are not doing this class with actual gear, what is designed for weight training. So we're not here with kettlebells or dumbbells, um, AKA items that have a very specific weight and have that weight very specifically written on them. Um, we're here weightlifting with random stuff and that's awesome because it's good to remind us that we can do free weight training just with stuff that we have around the house. However, it means that we can't be as deliberate about how we are loading ourselves uh, as we can be in the gym. So if this is your first time taking class, this class specifically, I want you to err on the conservative side uh, when you are loading yourself for different exercises. Start lighter, and then if you get through the set and you go, okay, I can definitely add some weight on, then you'll have plenty of time to figure out how to add some weight on before you come back through to the exercise again. Um, but don't start by immediately, you know, carrying everything in the kitchen sink uh, in your hands. Really build up to that. And then as you continue to take this class, you'll get a better sense of what objects weigh what, um, and you'll know how better to use them in this class. Um, the other important form note uh, for any free weight training that you're doing is to always pitch the amount of weight that you are using towards your weaker side, okay? Um, so if I'm over here doing dumbbell presses with two dumbbells, one in each hand, I am not using dumbbells that are the weight that my stronger arm can manage. I'm using dumbbells that are the weight that my weaker arm can manage for both sides. Because if you try to load your weaker side to the capacity of your stronger side, then uh, you are making it extremely likely, if not uh, assured, that your weaker side is going to have to do some unhealthy things to try and move that weight. It's not going to be able to maintain form correctly, and that's how we set ourselves up for injury. And when we are using heavy things, whether they are actual gym-designed heavy things or things you can find around your house heavy things, we don't want to mess around with that because we don't want to injure ourselves. So. Those are our pre-class caveats. Important, important to keep in mind as we're here. And now let's go through our pre-class checklist. Yes, oh God. <laughs> like if I, if I haven't actually washed my water bottle by next week, I, you know, feel free to call me out on Twitter or something because I know this is getting a little ridiculous, but make sure you have some sort of a vessel that carries water that you can access easily during class to keep yourself hydrated. Make sure you've got your comfy clothes on. Anything that you can move around in easily, be it like moisture wicking fancy stuff or a cotton t-shirt and shorts. Uh, make sure you've got your mat set up or your mat sized space in the room. Um, you know, if you are on some sort of wood flooring or hard flooring, I definitely recommend having like a yoga mat down just for some additional padding, uh, especially because these surfaces aren't necessarily designed for exercise. So having that additional padding makes it easier on your joints. And if you're using a fitness wearable, it's time to turn them on. We are not doing high intensity interval training today. We are doing strength training um, and that will better capture the work that we're doing. But, <sighs> The checklist is done. The warnings are given. That was my app, my timer app that I just closed, which was not what I meant to do. It's time for our warm up. So we start class with our 16 minute warm up. Yes, it is specifically 16 minutes. Uh, I always feel so silly when I say that, but it is like that is legitimately the amount of time. So starting getting ready for our warm up, we're going to start on our mats on our backs, one foot crossed over the opposite knee, and we're gonna kick off with hip rocks and bridges. So as soon as you hear 
the horn go, we will be off and away. All right? So here we go. Woo! I could probably turn that down a notch. Uh, I think I think you can hear that. <laughs> I never know, though. I mean, it's one of my goals over the next month or so is definitely to get myself set up with um, some better video equipment and some better audio equipment. Just because I do know, you know, just from editing the VODs so I can put them up on my YouTube channel, I do know that the audio quality does get worse the farther away from my laptop I am. And the video quality gets worse too because I don't really have a great lighting setup. It'll probably be slightly better today because the cloudiness outside means that I can just have my curtain open. Um, but usually I can't do that and soon we are going to be in the time of year where, all right, switch feet, keep doing what you're doing. Soon we're going to be in the time of year where there it'll just be nighttime by the time I'm teaching this class. So I, uh, I definitely have plans to glow up the equipment for this channel. Um, you know, just to, because, you know, partially because it's just, it would be nice to make everything look a little prettier and partially because it's just going to help you to better, you know, be able to see and hear what I'm doing and describing. And since we are, you know, not in the same room, since I am here in my own living room and you're in your living room, um, you know, you can't ask questions directly of me. So I want to make sure that I'm doing everything possible to give you as much clarity as I can on what I'm asking of you. All right, we are lying on our sides doing our best Jane Fonda impression, making sure that our bodies are in a nice straight line. So part of that is engaging the core so that your uh, hips don't go rolling forward or backward, but can just stay right here. Part of that is engaging the glute on the working leg, not trying to pull the leg in any direction. Although if you are actively engaging the glute on that leg, it's gonna feel initially like you are pulling the leg backwards out of alignment. It feels really weird, but I promise you're not actually pulling the leg out of alignment. You're just helping it to stay in that nice straight line from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. All right, now top foot flat on the floor in front of that bottom knee and we're lifting that bottom leg. So here we are. So we have not switched sides. Um, that, uh, that's a warning I used to have to give in my in-person classes because you know, we're used to just doing, okay, we do first side and then we do the second side. And uh, for this leg sequence, we have three exercises in a row before we move to the other side. So if you have rolled over, please roll back. Um, or remember how you sort of strangely ordered things so that you can make sure to even yourself out. That's the most important thing is just making sure that we can even ourselves out, that we're not, uh, you know, putting all of the attention on one leg to the detriment of the other leg. Um, all right, top foot behind that bottom knee, still lifting that bottom leg. And this is our easiest position to maintain. Really enjoy having the, the super long pants on today because they're just like, there's no friction for this motion. Sometimes there can be friction. This is just nice and easy. Oh, it's Friday, my friends, and I am looking forward to the weekend. I am, um, yeah, just, I, it's so interesting. I feel like this time, this time, you know, while we're still well, hopefully primarily quarantining and uh, and staying indoors and staying safe, 
um, it, it feels like there's both so much to do and nothing to do, and whether or not I feel the former or the latter doesn't really have anything to do with what I've actually done during the day. Um, and so sometimes just, you know, there's no way to really accurately predict what days I'm going to feel really tired and run down and what days I'm going to feel really, you know, energetic and, and ready to go. Um, I don't know if any of you struggle with that, but it definitely, yeah, yeah, it, it, it is a little, it can be a little frustrating to feel like uh, there's no particular rhyme or reason <laughs> to whether I'm feeling, you know, tired uh, or energetic, you know, if I'm feeling tired, all right, top foot in front of that bottom knee, lifting that bottom leg. If I'm feeling tired, it doesn't necessarily mean that I did a ton of stuff the day before. And it's like, well, that's frustrating. If I'm gonna feel tired and run down, I would like it to at least be because I, you know, had a pretty busy day or something the day before. But, um, you know, we're all, we are all doing the best that we can to make it, to make it through and to move forward. And, um, you know, there's a lot to be angry about and a lot to be scared about um, in terms of the state of the U.S., um, the upcoming election, the, you know, terrifying surges in just blatant, no longer even trying to hide it, white supremacist violence. Um, and it can be really easy to, to feel really overwhelmed just because of all of that, you know? Um, and if you're here taking class with me, then I hope that it is because you recognize that in order for us to be able to go out and to really fight for justice and to take care of the people who need help um, and who need support, we need to also be taking care of ourselves. And one of the components of that is working out, is exercise, is keeping your body fit and healthy um, so that you can feel strong, so that you can increase your stamina, and so that you can really get yourself moving through the world towards whatever goals you have. I apologize if you can hear the incredible bass sounds coming through the walls. Um, as I had said before, this apartment complex continues to baffle me in terms of uh, soundproofing because 80% of the time, it feels remarkably well soundproofed. Like when I close the door out to my porch, I don't get any traffic noise or anything coming in from outside. And uh, believe me, when I'm sitting on the porch, the traffic noise is very audible. Um, and yeah, I don't always hear conversations that are taking place in other apartments, but uh, but yeah, sometimes it really does feel like they just come pouring through without, again, without any particular rhyme or reason. So if any of that sound comes through, my apologies. Uh, hopefully you can still hear me though. Oh man, that's the other thing that's been a little weird the last couple of days. I jammed my knee. Um, it was Wednesday, uh, like long after I'd gone to bed, and I got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and was walking back to my bed and just sort of, 
my knee just like locked in place and I as I took a step and it just and it hasn't been in pain but it has definitely been stiff uh, particularly yesterday and so I'm trying to keep an eye on that so if I if I take some of this stuff a little bit easy today uh, it's because I am trying to make sure that whatever I did uh, to my knee in a state of walking tiredly back to bed uh, does not turn into any sort of a full-blown injury and thankfully yeah it hasn't it hasn't actually been painful I haven't noticed any impediments to my range of motion or anything like that so I do think it was you know more, more jarring than anything else but you know the knee has been a little bit stiff and so there was definitely some sort of an impact so I'm just going to be keeping an eye on that as we go through today's class oh man here we are at our Samson stretches if you have been sitting at your computer all day or if you have uh, a job that requires you to stand for multiple hours on end and this is the stretch for you really sinking down there really stretching out the front of that hip flexor just reaching those arms straight up and down towards the ceiling we're not trying to reach them behind us okay there's going to naturally be some curve in the back just because of this position but we're not actively trying to increase it okay and uh, making sure that your hips are always square to the front all right oh coming down into this nice low wide squat position making sure that your knees are kept safely over your feet having your hands on your knees helps that immensely and as you know we don't always have that uh, benefit when we do later exercises so always as we're doing the warm-up really enjoy and take advantage of the fact that you can uh, lever your your knees into the correct position feel what this feels like to have them over your feet so that later if you're doing an exercise that doesn't allow for this positioning you know what to feel for in your legs oh, all right we have made it to the cardio portion of our warm-up hip hip hooray remember this section as with all sections of the warm-up we are not you know ramping up our energy and our movement to 11 we're not going for super intensity uh, pushing ourselves to our limits we are still booting up all of our mental and physical systems so that we can spend the next 45 minutes exercising so as we're doing these uh, jumping jacks yeah hopefully your heart rate is starting to go a little faster your breath is starting to come a little faster oxygen moving more swiftly through your body but you're not you know going at ah uh, at the fastest that you can do a jumping jack you know you're not going for the widest motions all right i'm not going to do kick throughs right now because of that knee i did feel a little bit of twinging there so that is not going to be an ideal exercise for me but just keeping in mind for ourselves that we are still warming up still booting up this is the end of the process but it doesn't mean that we need to go all the way to 100 percent you know you can go somewhere between 70 and 90 percent um 
but always keep in mind that you need to have energy for the rest of class because there's a lot of class left after we finish out this last slot here which are burpees and remember wave push up and nice big victory clap up at the top so i know some people really want to do their beautiful plank push-ups no that is not what we do in this particular exercise it is not what is being asked of you and you know that's an important component when we're here in class and I am asking you to do something specific you know if you need to modify something because of an injury um, that uh, is totally totally valid but we don't want to be over here modifying things just because oh we feel like it or we like this exercise better all right that's not the goal you know always assume that i have a reason that i have structured things the way that i have and that there is a, a benefit to doing things in that format so even if the wave push-up really annoys you still what we're looking for in those burpees all right water time mm. Mm -hmm. oh yeah oh yeah let's get hydrated woo <sighs> okay my friends Ooh. oh my goodness it's actually raining like it's not gonna rain for a lot of time but just having some water <laughs> Falling to earth in this state is desperately needed. So thank you to everyone who has been sending thoughts of rain and of uh, calming winds and lessening fires to my current home state. Uh, they are very appreciated and are bearing out some fruit today. So woohoo! All right. So here is our structure today. We're still going to be doing our two minute timers. So I'm gonna start the timer once we've gone over what the exercises are and it will be running in two minute increments. And the uh, setup is that you do the number of reps um, and then you use the rest of that time as your rest period okay uh and then when the horn goes off again you move to the next exercise do your reps stop rest so on and so forth we are going to have six exercises today and we're going to go through them because it's only a two minute timer we're going to be able to go through them three times in total so it's going to be a longer structure uh, a longer series of exercises before we circle back to the beginning um, and we're only going through them three times not four uh, the way that we do when we have only four exercises so that's the setup the uh, the reps I'm gonna give you a range um, today I think I'm gonna say 20 to 35 okay with the caveat with the constant reminder that we are not uh we're not trying to go to failure so if you are like no i'm gonna do i'm gonna do 35 and the 35th the, the 30th through 35th reps you just do not have the form at all then you're not doing it right okay um set a goal number for yourself and go for that goal number but if you start to notice that your body's getting fatigued if you start to go 
okay, I feel like I am going to completely lose my ability to maintain the form if I do another rep, then stop. That's your number. That's the number that you can do, okay? Listen to your body, always. All right, here are the exercises. Uh, and make sure that you have all your stuff sort of piled up close to hand. <sighs> um, I am going to be, for a number of these, using small, smaller books. Um, particularly, a couple of these exercises don't need super heavy weights, so these books are great for that. Uh, I've got a heavier book for one of our uh, tricep exercises, and then I've got this buddy that I have a few books in. Um, backpacks are great because you can change the amount of weight in them. Um, so here are our exercises. We are going to start with a, a new one. All right, so we're going to take a nice deep position, held squat, and we're going to hold our books out to our sides. And we're going to turn one knee in so that we've got a double legged lunge and bring that other hand forward to meet back to the center, turn the other way back to the center, okay? So for anything like that, that has uh, two sides to it, um, you wanna do an even number of reps. So you don't want, if you wanted to do 35 for that, you would have to do 36 or 34, okay? But you don't want to end on an odd number and be like, well, I uh, guess that other side just doesn't get that last rep, okay? Second, we are gonna do a bent over row. Now, this may require uh, further modification. So I've got a couple of books that are about the same uh, in weight. So I can do this as I would do it with my uh, dumbbells where I'm going to bend my knees and take my back in a bit of a flat back, letting the weights hang down in front of me. My shoulders are engaged, so they're not being pulled down by the weight. And then just rowing up and down and up and down. That's how I would do it when I have two objects of roughly the same weight in my hands. If you don't have that, then you can turn this into basically a one-armed exercise. You'll need something like the arm of a chair that you can bring a knee up onto. So whichever hand, whichever arm you're gonna be working, bring the opposite knee up onto the arm of your chair, put your hand on it as well, and then you can do a single side for the rows and you'll just have to uh, make sure that you're doing an even number on both sides. Since we are not going through four times, we're only going through three, if you do take that option, then you need to, if, uh, if you're like, okay, I wanna do 20 reps, I need you to do 10 on one side and 10 on the other so that you make sure that you're evening out again, okay? Uh, or you could do 20 on one side and 20 on the other, but that is going to take a long time, probably more time than the time will allow, wow, okay? Third exercise. Doo, doo, doo. Ah, yes. Third exercise. Still using these, uh, these lighter books are going to get a lot of work today. Um, so we're going to take a nice lunge position, extended long leg holding these books out in front of us. I'm going to stand up and pull that knee up and then back. Up and back. Up and back. Up and back. Okay? So this is going to be the same thing that I said if you're doing one-sided version of the rows. So 
If you want to do a total of 20 reps, then do 10 on that side, then switch which leg is behind you in the lunge, and do 10 on that other side, okay? So making sure that you're evening yourself out. All right, now we're gonna do a lying down tricep extension. So that's what I'm gonna use my book for. Um, you basically, you want something that you can bring down pretty close to the floor without it actually ending up resting on the floor, okay? So a book is really good for that. My like backpack isn't as ideal for that because it's gonna hit the floor long before I've been able to bend my arms to where they're actually getting any work. So I've got my book straight up above me. I'm just laying on the floor, feet flat on the floor, and I'm gonna bring the book down and up and down and up. And you can always hold multiple books if you need a little more weight. Just make sure that you have a firm grip on them, okay? That's important. All right, so that was our fourth exercise. We've got two more. Fifth one, familiar. It's just our goblet lunges. All right, so you can hold on to a backpack or uh, if you have a laundry detergent bottle that is similar to that one, you can hold on to that from the sides. You just want to hold it in front of your body like this about chest height, okay? And then we're going to step forward into that double-legged lunge, push back and forward and back and forward and back, okay? And then finally, curls. So again, preferably you wanna have two objects of about the same weight so you can take a nice solid stance you know right here my feet are between hip and shoulder width apart I've engaged my glutes so that and my core so that everything else is stable and I'm just going to hold the books palms facing forward curl up and down and up and down if you again if you need to you absolutely can do this one arm at a time. You know, backpack can be really good for this, but since we're only doing three times through in total, you'll have to do that same uh, rep management that we talked about. So if I wanted to do 10 reps in total, do five and five here, okay? All right, so, that's a lot, okay? We got a lot of exercises to get through. Um, we've got our lunge, turning the knees like that. We've got our bent over rows. We've got lunge to the knee pull. We've got our tricep extension laying on the floor. We've got our goblet lunges and we've got our curls six exercises we're going to go through three times each all right and i'm going to get that timer going and as soon as you hear it go we are moving okay so everybody to your mats make sure that you have your objects ready get ready get into position and here we are so again for something like this where we are going from side to side you want to do an even number. So I'm not going to do, you know, 21 reps. I'm gonna do 22 reps, etc., etc. Okay? Whew. Oh, I like that one a lot. That's a new one. <laughs> you know, I follow a lot of various fitness folks online, and it's always fun to get uh, inspiration for new exercises to add to my arsenal. Um, and I'm probably gonna start doing, you know, some, maybe some Insta stories or maybe some 
some streams where uh, where I start where I just do a bunch of research, sort of look up different types of exercises, test them out, see how they feel, see how they work, um, you know, and uh, hopefully start bringing them into rotation in class. Mm. Uh, again, make sure that you're doing all your reps in a row, okay? Our goal is not do a couple of reps, rest a bit, do a couple of reps, rest a bit, all right? You wanna do all of your reps in a row and then use the remaining time on the timer as rest. So drink water, stretch out a bit if you have to, um, that kind of thing. But do not, do not be, you know, doing a few of the reps and then chilling. All right, knock, 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 that means Time to get your weights ready for the next exercise. We've got our bent over rows, okay? So I'm gonna show the regular version. So if you have two objects that are about the same amount of weight that you can grip firmly in your hands, then this is the exercise you're doing. My core is super engaged because I've got this flat back position going, okay? so. I need to be able to maintain that safely and not start throwing my lower back into weird and terrible positions. Also, um, and I don't really say this enough, honestly, if you're doing this class and you do have dumbbells and kettlebells at home, you are more than welcome to use them. Absolutely. I don't use them in this class because my goal is specifically to show people how they can, you know, get a good free weight workout without being in the gym, uh, which is obviously a particularly useful skill right now for all of us. But, uh, but if you've got that equipment at home, there's nothing <laughs> that says that you have to be over here, you know, doing bent over rows with books when you've got a, a dumbbell rack behind you. So um, always feel free if you're taking this class and you do have that equipment, always feel free to use it, okay? No, no reason whatsoever why you shouldn't uh, use it. Oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah, I am very happy to see the rain out there. I, uh, it's been a dry summer and last year, it was a remarkably wet summer. All right, we're getting ready for the lunge with the knee pull. So getting into that long lunge, holding these books in front of us, pulling that knee up, pulling the books backwards as we pull that knee up. Remember, we are going to do half of the total number of reps that you want to do on this first side. And then you're going to switch to the other side and that way you evenly work both sides for the exercise okay so make sure that you're doing that and remember for this one and for our our opening exercise you know the wide squat stance with the knee rotations you do not need heavy weights. In fact, I want you to use lighter weights. Anything where we really require the engagement of the shoulders to really strengthen and stabilize, um, I want you to err on the side of lighter weights. Uh, it's just, it's safer that way. You don't need a ton of weight in order to get a good workout for that. So. Just keep that in mind. We're not going for holding, you know, 70 pound dumbbells as we're, uh, as we're doing these knee pulls, okay? Uh, but uh, yeah, last summer was remarkably wet. Um, and the spring too, you know, it was, we were having lots and lots of rain. You know, we had snow really late in the season. We had a lot of rain through the end of June, like it was 
green here until mid-July, which anybody who has ever lived in Colorado knows how unusual that is. Um, and, uh, you know, it was just such a wonderful change of pace. And honestly, I'm, I'm a little sad that this, this summer definitely reverted to form. It reverted to, hey, uh, let's get super dry here and not really rain a ton at all and set the state on fire. So hopefully, hopefully we start getting some more rain coming through. I mean, today is the first day in ages that it hasn't gotten up above um, 81 approximately. Where are we? Wow, right, fuck. It's 65 degrees right now. That's crazy, considering the fact that it has been 90 to 99 for so much of the last month. Uh, the fact that it's 65 already is just so amazing. I love it. I am extremely happy to see that. Yoga, well, not quite, but you know, it's similar. Uh, everything comes together in the end. <laughs> uh, so yes, yay for rain, yay for hydrating the earth and hydrating ourselves. Oh. All right, knock, knock, knock. It's time for goblet lunges. So you want that one heavy weight that you can hold in front of you. And we start with the lunge. You're not trying to actually get your knee all the way onto the floor, all right? You're not actually putting weight on that knee. So you only want it to go down, maybe it taps, maybe, but you really want to uh, just go almost down to the ground and then push back. And with that front knee, you don't want it pushing super far forward, okay? You don't want it pushing past your toes. You want that front knee to be as close to perpendicular to the ground as possible. So we're still going for those 90 degree angles on both sides, okay? <sighs> awesome. I like goblet lunges. They're just, any of these sort of leg-based free weight exercises, I find really interesting because, you know, with arm exercises, the arm is actively lifting the weight, right? With the leg exercises, more often than not, it's not that we are using the leg to lift a weight up, it's that we're holding a weight, which means that the legs need to exert more force to move our overall mass through space. Um, and I just think that's a really cool way to get a leg workout when you're doing free weight exercises. You know, when you have machines, it's easier to have exercises where yes, the leg is literally moving the weight, um, but not so much with, uh, with free weights, so. I just love this stuff. All right, curls. We got our weights in hand and we're curling away. A friend of mine is going to be dropping off an anatomy book for me uh, like next week, maybe the week after. I can't quite remember, but I am so excited uh, because I think it will be time to really start digging back into some studies um, and just really getting, getting to see what, uh, what I can do, um, what I can learn. So I am very excited to do that. And uh, gosh, I need to make sure that I get all of my CEUs done 
to get recertified as a personal trainer before the end of the year. So that is exciting. That's another thing that I need to work on. Uh, just a lot, of, a lot of studying opportunities coming up, which is really cool. It's fun to learn new things for all of this and uh and to just learn more about the human body which is just such a weird and fascinating contraption um it is just it does so much and its systems are both very simple and very complicated and uh you know i never really i never really enjoyed science class in high school i basically stopped taking it as long, as soon as i could and I wish that I had had an opportunity to really study anatomy uh, in high school or college because I do definitely find it very interesting. All right, my friends, we are coming back to the top of the rotation. So back to our nice wide squat with the knee rotation. Here we are, it's our second time through all of the exercises. So I know there's a lot more that we have to keep in our heads when we're doing six exercises uh, than when we're doing four exercises. So I'm going to try to be uh, more on the ball about reminding you what exercises we're doing at what times so that, so that you know where we are in the cycle. Ah, uh, because it can get really weird and frustrating. Mm. Oh man. But remember to check in on your form every time you come back to an exercise, every time you start it out. How's that form doing? How does it feel compared to the first time you did it? You know? How do those muscle groups feel? Do you feel additional fatigue? or are you still feeling really strong and stable in them? You know, start learning how to check in with what your body's feeling about the work that it's doing and uh, make sure that you have that understanding of where you are. Because it could be, you know, that you started out doing, being able to do 35 reps and the second time, maybe you can only make it to 30 you know maybe you can only make it to 20 and then maybe you go through the third time you can make it back to 32 you know but just because we have set that goal number it's important to have those goal numbers but it's also important to be able to identify when we we're a little over optimistic okay and i never ever ever want you to be so focused on hitting that one specific goal number that you uh, let yourself lose the form while you're doing the exercise, okay? Never, ever, ever. So you need to build that understanding of where your body is and what it's telling you. And you need to build that understanding of what the correct form even feels like, okay? That's why we talk about it so much. That's why I focus on it so much because you need to know what that is supposed to feel like so that you can tell when your body is no longer there, okay? Or rather, you wanna be able to tell before your body is no longer there. You want to be able to identify the rep before you will no longer be able to hang on to the form, okay? And use that as a reason to go, okay, I'm stopping now, all right? Because again, it is absolutely useless to do 30 or 50 reps of an exercise incorrectly, okay? All you're doing is training your body incorrectly training it in bad form so and more, more often than not setting yourself up for an injury down the line because you're not 
doing the form correctly. And when you go back and do the exercise the next time, your brain is going to be trying to do it in this incorrect fashion. Okay? So make sure that you are focused on form at all times. That's why we talk about it so much in this class, okay? We really, form is more important than almost anything else that I will tell you to do. You need to start with the form, okay? And everything else will come later. The starting on time, the stopping on time, you know, increasing your reps, increasing your power, all of that stuff will come later. You need to start before anything else with learning the form for everything you are asked to do, okay? And once you have that as your foundation, then you can challenge yourself, push yourself a little harder and be able to improve your performance safely without setting yourself up for an injury that's going to derail your ability to train, derail your ability to move, and sort of reset the clock in a way that we don't want to do, okay? Having an injury is, <laughs> is the worst thing that we can do for being able to continue our training. It's far worse than, oh, well, I didn't, you know, increase my reps by my stated goal this month. Okay, that's fine. Maybe that goal is going to take longer than you thought. But, uh, but if you injure yourself trying to push yourself to be able to hit that goal, then it's really going to take longer than you thought because you're not going to be able to train for a while while you heal. And then you're going to have to get your uh, strength and stamina and ability back to where they were before the injury. And if you injured yourself because you didn't have the correct form, then you're still going to have to learn something completely new because you didn't have that set up in the first place. So it just, just start with that base start with that base of form. Everything else can get figured out down the line. But if you have that form, if that is the hill that you die on, then you will be able to continue moving farther for longer and enjoying it while you're doing it and not losing time to injury, all right? And we're bad at teaching this. Um, we are really bad at teaching this to people, starting uh, when we're, you know, in elementary school, starting when we're in PE classes. We, we are so focused on, you know, pushing kids to adult-like performance and pushing them to this, like, win, win, win mentality. And we don't teach them how to listen to their body, listen to what their body is trying to tell them and to be able to be fit and to be active, but to do it safely and to look at their body as a partner in that effort and not as an enemy. I feel like a lot of people who are over here, you know, doing the no pain, no gain, uh, approach to training and all that bullshit are they're looking at their bodies as an enemy and <laughs> that's that's never going to be a good relationship between you and your body if you want to have a fit life your body is a part of you your body is a partner in this work your body is doing a lot to keep you mobile, to keep you moving, to keep you safe. And we want, we in turn, and by we, I mean, you know, these brains that we've got 
floating around in our heads, we need to listen to our body and go, okay, you're telling me that I need to pull back for a little bit. You're telling me that I have maybe been pushing a little too hard or you know, maybe I jammed my knee walking back from the bathroom the other night and need to take it a little easier on myself. And if you listen to those signals, if you listen to those cues, then you are going to be able to maintain your movement, your uh, active life for much, much longer. And isn't that what we're going for? You know, I wanna, I wanna be able to be walking up and down mountains when I'm in my 70s and 80s. I absolutely want that. And I think that I'll be able to do that. Mm. But I need to make sure that I'm being smart and safe with all of this movement, you know? So form, form, form. Always, always form. All right? I, I will harp on that every day in every class. And I will not stop. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> because I want you to be able to keep doing class with me for a long, long time. And you know what gets in the way of that? Injuries. And I've done that. I had a lot of my exercise completely derailed um, like two years ago with a shoulder injury. That still impacts me today. You know, it's still something that I'm dealing with and it's a lot better absolutely but it is still something i need to pay attention to you know there are days like today when i'm like okay my shoulder is twinging a lot so i need to really make sure that i am not using weight that is too heavy for my weaker side i need to make sure that i'm really focusing on form and focusing on how i'm moving these weights through space and just taking care of it, you know? So injury, no fun. I wasn't able to do this class for ages. This was before I was teaching it when I was just taking it. Uh, I had to stop climbing, rock climbing. Uh, as many of you know, in the before times, uh, all of my fitness instruction was through the Boulder Rock Club and I had to stop climbing for ages and I, I never really got back to it before everything shut down because of COVID. You know, so I haven't gotten to go rock climbing in ages. And uh, it's really sad. Oh my goodness, everybody. We are here. The final set, the final run through our exercises. So here we are. Man, for somebody who twinged her, who jammed her knee a few nights ago, I sure did put a lot of knee heavy stuff in this class. Uh, but it's okay because I'm the teacher, so I can pull back and stuff when I need to. All right, yes, this is our last time through. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So this is our last time through for the uh, squat with the knee rotation. So again, when I'm here in this position, I want to make sure that my knees are not caving forward. All right, I want to make sure that I am able to keep them over my feet. And then when I rotate, my knee is still here, heading straight over that foot, back to that position and to the other side, okay? But you wanna be able to make sure that you can maintain that on both sides, all right? Oh man, yeah, yeah, yeah. We are so close, we are so close to done. I'm very excited. Uh, I took a little longer explaining the exercises than I intended to. So we're gonna go a little bit long today. My apologies. Uh, that just means that you're getting your full workout in. Um, and uh, I am not gonna be able to run stretches today. So just make sure that, you know, generally I don't do as intensive of a stretch sequence after these uh, free weight classes. 
just because we're not, it, it's not the same type of workout that we're doing in our, uh, in our body weight classes. But there are plenty of examples of lots of stretch sequences that we have done in classes over the last five months. So definitely check out some of those VODs, uh, you know, going towards the end of class to uh, get to the stretch sequence. And if you, you know, want, really want a stretch sequence, that'll be the way to do it. And over the next couple of months, I will be putting some of our more commonly used stretch sequences up on the YouTube channel so that whenever we have, you know, a situation where I'm not able to lead you through stretches at the end of class, um, you can go to the YouTube channel and pull up one of the stretch sequence videos and uh, follow along with that. So, uh, so much content, delicious content. Oh, I'm so excited to make it, to make it all. Yes. All right. Hey, how's everybody doing on hydration? Are you remembering to drink your water? Mm. Mm. It can feel easier to forget in a class like this when we're not generally hitting the same level of like cardio intensity that we do in our body weight classes. It's hard to forget to drink water in those classes. It can be easier uh, in our strength training classes. So make sure that you are still drinking water. You still need to hydrate. And we adult humans are very bad at remembering to hydrate. It's really annoying. I don't know why we're so bad at it, but we are. Hey, so, all right. Coming back to those lunge pulls. Last time for lunge pulls. Da, da, da. Oh my goodness. So, woo. Sorry, falling off balance. Let me reset there. Ha, there we go. Now with a class like this, the, uh, the starting on time and stopping on time components of the bare minimum are a little less critical because we have so much time in our timers. You know, we're not over here. Um, we're not over here going, okay, I only have 20 seconds to do this movement. So I need to make sure that I'm really starting as soon as I hear that horn. We've got a full two minute timer. Um, so I'm not as intense about the starting on time and stopping on time for these classes. Form, form is still important. Form is always important. But uh, if you, you know, hear the horn and then you're like, oh, crap, here I am. Now I'm in position. And then you go, you're still going to have plenty of time to get through the exercise and to get a nice little rest in there. So it should end up being fine. <laughs> oh man. Oh, what a beautiful evening. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I am pleased. And I hope that you guys have been having a good class. I enjoy these classes. You know, I think I've said it before that uh, free weight training is not my, uh, my area of most expertise. You know, I have been a dancer for most of my life. So body weight exercise is definitely what appeals to me most. Um, and it definitely is what I tend towards when I teach, but, uh, but I am definitely enjoying getting to experiment a little with some, uh, some weight training, some free weight fun, just with stuff that we have around the house, you know, just wander through your house. And if there's any object that you've ever picked up before and gone, Ooh, I could weight lift with this. Well, now's the time to put your money where your mouth is and try weightlifting with that object. And uh, you can really, you can really get some good work in there. You can absolutely get some good, good work. 
And the more often that you take this class, the better of an understanding of the weight of different objects you'll have. So you'll better understand how to safely load for this class, which is another thing that's super useful. It's why you know, it's good to take this class on a pretty regular basis because you want to get that deeper understanding so that you are able to increase your, your weight a little bit, increase your loading a little bit. Um, and it's never going to be as easy as it is if we have the actual gym equipment, okay? Um, it's never gonna be as easy, but uh, you know, perfect is the enemy of good. And when we get into a mood where we have to have the absolute perfect setup or we just can't exercise, well, we're gonna lose a lot of opportunities for movement and for growth there. So uh, as you know, my goal is to help everybody understand and sort of remove one of those mental excuses of why you're not uh, able to exercise or work out right now, you know? I, I used to do this a lot when, um, when I had a job that required me to travel a lot for work and I would have a pretty good uh, workout routine at home and then I would go on these week-long trips and you know I would uh, I would bring exercise clothes sometimes but frequently it would feel you know a little more trouble than it was worth to put them on and then I had to figure out where the gym was I didn't know what equipment they had. And you know, those hotel gyms are always really small. And so I probably would have to fight for the machines that I wanted anyway. And you come up with so many reasons why you're like, all right, well, I'm just not gonna work out. You know, there is so much that we can do without ever leaving our house um, or your hotel room. You know, if you don't wanna, if you don't wanna figure out where the hotel gym is, that's fine. Just do a body weight class in, in your hotel room. You all you need is a mat sized amount of space, and I can guarantee that you will have that in your hotel room, you know? And it's the thing that I really appreciate about doing these streams is getting the opportunity to get a little more creative for myself. Um, you know, where I really wasn't, ironically, when I started teaching, I lost some of the main avenues of my own personal exercise routine because I was suddenly teaching those classes that I used to take and uh, hadn't really figured out how to replace them or hadn't really had the full motivation to do so. And so these, these streams have been a great opportunity to remind myself that, you know what? I can work out wherever I am, you know? If all I have is this small little patch of living room, I can still get an amazing workout in. And it's something that I, need to remind myself a lot and it's something that I want to keep passing on to you you know we we are being thrown into really intense circumstances right now and it can feel um because it's true it feels like the ground is shifting under our feet all the time um and you know that can be really hard it can be hard to lose our routines. It can be hard to feel like we don't understand the world around us. It can be hard to have to come, you know, have to come to terms with the brutality and the systemic racism that is so present in our society. It can be hard to come to terms with the fact that there is a pandemic raging through our country that our government by and large 
uh, has proved both unwilling and unable to deal with. Um, and all of that stuff can make it really hard for us to figure out how to take care of ourselves, especially when we've lost our usual avenues of doing that. So if there is one thing that I want you to remember, it's that you have the ability to do all of this work just from home. You don't need special equipment. You don't need to be around other people. Um, you can get an awesome workout. You can stay fit and healthy just here in the comfort of your own home. And the more that you do this, the more that you take care of yourself in this way, the more you will be able to take care of others. And you know, that's my goal. And I have a feeling it's the goal of a lot of you as well. So, oh, yay, er, good weightlifting. Good weightlifting today, my friends. Oh man, yeah. That was an awesome class. I did go much longer than usual because I, I got a little stuck in explanation, so I apologize. But you definitely got your full workouts worth in. So, huzzah! Uh, we've got one more class this week. It's going to be tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, the weekend kickoff, which is our nice strength and stamina focused bodyweight class to just get us into the weekend, get the weekend going on, on the right foot. Um, and then that'll be the end of streams for the week. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Facebook and Insta at Blanche Case Fitness. Twitter at Blanche C Fitness. Uh, all of the VODs from this channel are uploaded to my YouTube channel, Blanche Case Fitness. So uh, head over there and give that a subscribe. Um, if you are financially able to do so and uh, would like to make a donation, I do have a coffee, coffee, Ko-Fi, I say Ko-Fi, I'm sure it's supposed to be coffee. I have a coffee account um, at Blanche Case Fitness. Donations are always appreciated, never required. And if you had fun today and wanna take more classes, wanna see me make more content, wanna help me uh, grow this community, then please uh, follow this channel because we got lots of, lots of fun stuff coming, coming down the way. So, all right, well, I would say that it is time to go enjoy the rest of our Friday evenings uh, and head off into the weekend with style. So thank you so much for being here and perhaps I will see some of you tomorrow. Have a great night.